So now we've had a look at the hardware, we should take a look at the software that you use to control it. That's the Dadman software, which is freely downloadable from the DAD website. The AX32 is a remotely controlled piece of hardware. That remote control happens via Ethernet using the Dadman software that you can download from the DAD website. And here it is. First thing you need to do is make sure that uh, the software is communicating with your hardware properly. That's done from the settings device list and you set up the IP address. You can do manual IP addresses with subnet masks and all of that stuff if that's appropriate to you. Or you can do what I've done here and go via DHCP, which worked very well. Uh, if it doesn't show up once you've set it up, refreshing the IP list hopefully will reveal it. There's a couple of other things that are quite useful. One thing in here is that in preferences, you can find this under options in the Windows version, you can uh, open the last setting file at startup, uh, which is a useful thing, so that it'll open up uh, giving you where you last left off. And uh, the settings persist on the hardware when you power the computer down, so that's a, that's a good thing to know. Uh, also, it's, I do quite like software that, that doesn't look too pretty if it's, if it's made by a hardware manufacturer because it tells me they've spent their time making sure the hardware is good rather than the software. Um, this software works very well. It is this quite, quite oppressive gold colour, which if, if it isn't to your taste, you can change over to grey or light grey if that's something you feel like you need to do. So the software itself split up into four sections, AD, D2A, uh, configuration and uh, control. So in the A to D section, we've got all the available uh, A to D, which in this case is 32 mic line channels. It depends what cards you've got installed in the unit. Uh, here we've got switchable between line or mic. There's a reassuring click of relays from the unit when you do that. Uh, in line, you can set your operating level and there's a trim dB and a half each way, which pretty much gives you a, a uh, continuous range throughout. And uh, on the microphone side, uh, we've got switchable phantom power, we've got phase and mute available for both. And here we've got 72 dB of gain and it really, really nice mic preamps. So yeah, very worth, very worth uh, checking out if you have them available. On the D2A side, this unit has two cards, so that's 16 channels of D2A uh, with faders and mutes as appropriate. I'll just put those away and uh, here in the uh, in the control section, we've got uh, we've got an overview matrix and we've got a detail matrix. So depending on which of these squares you click in the overview, the detail matrix will change to show that accordingly. Uh, we've got uh, we've got A to D, ASEBU, whatever Dante, uh, all of that stuff. And if I want to, for example, see my uh, A to D and D to A and patch in between. If I select this in the overview, then I get my two output cards and my four input cards, and I can make any combination of assignments I wish up here in a very familiar kind of uh, cross-point matrix setup. In the configuration, uh, we've got a few things that are quite useful in here. We've got uh, comprehensive sync options. Uh, we've got uh, options for ASEBU. In the Pro Tools HD, uh, you can either run with two primary ports or a uh, primary and, and an expansion port and the uh, AX32 will show up to Pro Tools uh, according to how you've set it up here. Uh, and MADI options, uh, including those optical outputs on the back. So that's a very brief tour of Dabman, uh, which works very well. And uh, I'll just open up all of it so we can see it all at once. And that's kind of what it looks like. I've been Julian and uh, I hope to see you next time.